Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. This week on Sports Files, I'll preview Monday afternoon's AutoZone Liberty Bowl and do so with the head coaches for the game. Kevin Sumlin of Texas A&M and West Virginia's Dana Holgerson. Happy holidays, everyone. We certainly hope you are having a joyous one. Tis the season also for bowl games. And for the Memphis Tigers, their first trip to a bowl game since 2008 was one to remember. After blowing a 10-point fourth quarter lead against BYU in the Miami Beach Bowl, the Tigers forced overtime late in regulation on a fourth down touchdown pass, forced double overtime on a 55-yard Jake Elliott field goal, then won it in double OT on a Paxton Lynch touchdown pass to freshman Roderick Proctor. The game would end on a Tigers interception, and then a melee would ensue that got pretty ugly. The Tigers' 10-win season would be their first since 1938. Congratulations. Okay, since 1965, the city of Memphis has played host to the Liberty Bowl game. This year marks the 56th annual postseason contest, having started back in 1959 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The AutoZone Liberty Bowl game is one of the oldest and most historic of the bowl games, and this year features a tremendous matchup of the SEC versus the Big 12. Texas A&M will rep the SEC. The Aggies finish the regular season 7-5. and five. Kevin Sumlin's team features a high-octane offense led by quarterback Kyle Allen, who replaced Kenny Hill as the team's starting quarterback in Week 9. Meanwhile, West Virginia will attempt to successfully fly the Big 12 banner on Monday. The Mountaineers also put together a 7-5 and five mark, which included a successful 5-4 and four record in the Big 12. And if you thought the Aggies could light up the scoreboard, West Virginia has been a scoring machine. Coach Dana Holgerson's offense, led by signal caller Clint Trickett, finished 17th in the nation in total offense. Today, I go one-on-two -on with the head coaches, Kevin Sumlin and Dana Holgerson. We'll get a preview of the game, a look back at each team's regular season through the eyes of their respective leaders, and we'll hear what it was like when the two worked together at Houston, with Sumlin serving as head coach of the Cougars and Holgerson as one of his assistants. It's all coming up next on Sports File. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me today. Great to see you. Great to have you in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl game. Kevin, let me start with you. To date, how would you evaluate your season? Oh, it's been one of ups and downs. You know, we've had some good wins. We've had some close losses. We've had some, some terrible losses. So we got a young team, uh, and I think we played that way. Uh, went real consistent. But, uh, showed some signs of being a pretty good team. And then, we, you know, with young team, sometimes guys were – a little bit overwhelmed. So we had peaks and valleys, but overall, you know, I think it's something we can build on in the future. Yeah, was that to be expected when you're coming off a year which was sensational and you lost the talent you lost? Yeah, we lost a couple guys and, and played a bunch of young young guys and uh, particularly quarterback, a couple couple real young guys. And, right. and uh, uh, But, you know, I, I think they grew as the year went and uh, we're excited to play in this game. Dana, I know you had some big wins and, and some tough losses as well. Talk about your season. Well, it was kind of the, the very similar script to Texas A&M, honestly. I mean, you know, the one thing about it is, is we're fortunate to be able to play in a good conference in the Big 12. We're fortunate to be able to play a tough schedule. Uh, we were competitive, <clears throat> for the most part, competitive all year. Unfortunately, we didn't win a couple of those close games in the middle. Uh, you know, played a lot of young guys. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, not going to a bowl game last year, it humbles you. Uh, so our guys are pretty fired up for this bowl prep, pretty fired up for this game. It's a great matchup when you get a team from the SEC, a team from the Big 12, two explosive offenses. Everybody expects, all right, fireworks galore with these two offenses. Is that what we should expect? Dana, let me start with you. Well, it, it depends on how these quarterbacks play, I think. I mean, we, we, we've played a couple of different quarterbacks throughout the course of the year. Uh, in, ended the year with a young guy ourselves, true sophomore. Uh, you know, we're still going to evaluate Clint Trekett to see if he's able to play. Uh, if he can't, then we're going to go with the young guy. And I know Texas A&M's got a couple of young guys there as well. So uh, two very similar offenses. And, uh, 
you know, you got to get those quarterbacks playing pretty good if you need to be successful. Right. And for those who don't know the situation with Clint, can you explain that to our viewers? Well, he just, you know, Clint's had a great year, you know, and he, he's not the most physical uh, presence, uh, you know, out there. He, he, he comes in about 6'1", 190 pounds. Uh, throughout the wear and tear of the season, you know, he ended up kind of getting knocked out of a couple of those games. So uh, he, we're evaluating where, he, where he's at. Uh, had a tremendous senior year. Is responsible for getting us to a bowl game. Uh, kind of ran out of gas there towards the end of the year. So we'll, we'll evaluate him and see where he's at. Kevin, I know it started out with uh, Trill Hill and uh, just an explosive performance as he came on the scene and beating South Carolina, that big game to open the season. And then, of course, it's, it's Kyle Allen, maybe midway to the end of the season, who put up some good numbers as well. Um, just talk about your quarterback situation. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's been documented. Kenny started off the year uh, on fire. Um, Kyle has come on, you know, and, and uh, really started the last four or five games of the year and, and continues to get better. So, you know, both of them are young. One's a, a, a true sophomore, the other guy's a, a true freshman. So, you know, I think Dana hit it right on the head. You know, the quarterback play will be big in this game as far as points and, and production, but uh, I think the guys have gotten better during the year, and we'll see how it works out. I know we're still a ways away from the game itself and, and breaking down each other's teams, but on the surface, when you, when you look at, at uh, West Virginia, what – worries you the most, concerns you the most about preparing for them? No, I think uh, they've, they've been really, really solid on defense. I think Dana hit it right on the head that they've had real close losses to, to some, some really good teams and, and beating some good teams. So uh, you, you see what's, you know, what, what the trademark of, of West Virginia football, what Dana's done, they're playing hard, they're playing fast, uh, changing the looks on defense and, and got some explosive players. So, you know, we're going to have to match that, that type of speed game speed real, real quickly in a game like this. Otherwise, you can get in trouble. No question. And Dana, when you look at Texas A&M, your concerns? Well, good news is I've been following Kevin his whole life here. So <laughs> I've, I've kind of got to figure out what he's doing on all three sides of the ball. I'd, we got to, we got to figure out what they're going to do defensively a little bit here. But, uh, uh, you know, offensively, there's a lot of uh, similarities what we're going to do. I mean, we're cut from the same mold. We got the same systems, uh, <clears throat> you know, probably try to figure out who can fool each other, I guess, more than anything. But, uh, you know, Texas A&M is a great football team. They, they've played at a very high level. They've been competitive for the majority of the, the, the tough losses that they've had, obviously. Right. And, and, and they're going to have great athletes running around. I know Kevin's been recruiting hard for three or four years at Texas A&M. Got great O-linemen that he sends to the NFL every year. And uh, just tons of, uh, tons of athletes on defense. So it'll be a challenge. All right, let's expound on what you said. Uh, <clears throat> cut from the same mode. You obviously have a relationship and a history. Um, Dana, two years under Kevin at Houston. What can you tell me about him, the man and the coach, and what did you learn from him? Well, I'll tell you what he does a, a, a fantastic job is, is being a CEO of the program. You know, he came in as an offensive guy like I was, uh, but just a fantastic job of being the CEO of the program. He does an uh, 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 unbelievable job recruiting, relating with his players, you know, building good quality young men, and, uh, you know, making sure that on all three sides of the ball, uh, he's getting the right schemes in place and getting them motivated to play. Uh, I tried to take a lot of that with me to West Virginia. You know, being an offensive guy myself and spending a lot of the, my, my whole career on offense, uh, you know, you're not going to win ch very many championships if you're not very good in recruiting, you're not very good on defense, and, and, and you're not molding these guys into what they need to be. So uh, it was a good two years under, under Coach Sumlin. I'm uh, pretty fortunate to be in this game right now at West Virginia. Two of the top offensive innovators in the game I'm speaking to right now. So when you had Dana, what did you see in Dana that has obviously propelled him to these heights? I saw a, a guy who is uh, brilliant you know, offensively and, is, and creatively across the board in football. A guy who was on the cutting edge, knew what he was wanting to do, uh, knew how to communicate it to, to young guys, knew how to motivate. And, uh, you know, it, it, like I said early in his career, uh, when we first, I first called him, you know, if, if uh, I wanted like, somebody to come in and, and be creative, do the things that, that we wanted to do offensively, and he just took it from there, and I'm not surprised he's had the success he's had. You mentioned earlier that uh, there's the improvement when you look at West Virginia's defense. This game has changed so much, as you guys know. Um, can you win big? strictly with offense and a mediocre defense or to win it all to be in the playoff to win a championship do you have to have some defense yeah i think so i think you have to have some defense you know we we struggled there uh and and uh, we're getting better 
But uh, without a doubt, you know, in the, the two conferences that we play in, uh, I think it, it, it bears out, you know, and, and particularly in the SEC and in the SEC West, you better play some defense, otherwise it'll be a long night. Kevin White, uh, speaking of trying to play defense on this guy, you have coached some darn good receivers. How good is he? Well, I, I tell you what's been fun to watch about, about Kevin is, is just, just developing in, into what you currently see as a senior. I mean, we're talking about a guy that was in junior college for three years, what, wasn't a dominating player in junior college, but was, what had, had a ton of athleticism. Uh, spent uh, two spring practices and a full year before he found uh, some confidence and, and, and a pretty good rapport with a quarterback that, that was on the same page with him. That doesn't hurt as well. Uh, but he's just a, he's a tremendous young man. Uh, he's going to get his degree uh, here over uh, the Christmas break. He's going to move on into the NFL and play for a long time. I need to defend this guy. Don't give away your trade secrets, but <laughs> it seems like it's almost impossible on paper. Yeah, he's uh, every time you look up on – uh, you know, for what we do on Saturday night on ESPN, he's he's on the highlights. So uh, we we that's the first guy that we knew who uh, who he was, and and on on video, I mean, he's he does it against everybody. So we better we better have some kind of plan to help him. You have obviously all these extra practices that coincide with being in a bowl game. So you're preparing for your opponent. Obviously, you want to come out with a W, but you're also looking ahead to, to next year. Is, is that the the case, Dana? As far as can you start preparing already for 2015? Well, you can do a little bit of that, uh, you know, but uh, shoot, just like we were talking about earlier, we, you, you, there's so much recruiting going on right now. There, there's a, a week's full of finals. Before you know it, you're in game prep like right, that. Right. So uh, there, there's, uh, you're, you're able to spend some time with them, which I think is important. You're able to challenge them a little bit more. Uh, you know, the, the days of being able to have 15, 16 practices, I think, are over. You know, you don't have that much time with them. But uh, the, the little work that you do, every little bit helps. Is it normal game preps for West Virginia, or are there new nuances that you throw in while you're preparing for the bowl game? Well, you know, you've got time. So, you know, coaches can be uh, their own worst enemy during this time because we come up with all kinds of stuff when we have time on our hands. Right, and, and, right. Uh, you know, and there's there's a lot of familiarity with with both of us, so I, I would assume that there's going to be some new stuff in this game. I would imagine there'll be some tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I know this guy pretty good. He's, he's going to be thinking of some uh, good I, stuff to put. I tell out you, there. the first thing we got to do is probably both of us is change our signals. So <laughs> <laughs> right, right. There may be some familiarity, right? Yeah, yeah maybe too. Um, Steve Earhart, the executive director of the Autos and Liberty Bowl, Harold Grader, all the fine folks that do such a great job with this bowl game. I know they're excited because we're talking about two of the great fan bases in college football, in Texas A&M and West Virginia. So, Dana, let me start with you. What has been the reaction and what type of um, support do you believe you'll get from the Mountaineers for this game? Yeah, our, our, our fan base is fired up. There's been some intense talks, you know, with the, with the Liberty Bowl in, in West Virginia for the last couple of years when the Liberty Bowl got involved with the Big 12. And obviously West Virginia, because of geography, was going to be a good fit. So, uh, and again, you know, don't mean to bring this up too much, but, but not going to a bowl game for a year, you know, that, that humbles you, it humbles right, your fan right. base. Our, our fan base is excited about traveling. Uh, it's within driving distance, and to be able to play a, a national uh, SEC team in Texas A&M, I think is going to be something that, that everybody's going to be fired up about. And Kevin, with the Aggie following, yep. what's it going to be like? Oh, it's going to be great. I think uh, our fans are fired up. You know, a lot of them haven't been in this area very, very often. Uh, I know our players are excited to be here. Fans are excited to be here. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's really a, a new place for us, an opponent that uh, it's hard to believe we've never played. Uh, right. And uh, so... Uh, that's always good for uh, not only the game, but good for the fans, too. So can the 12th man make a statement in Memphis? Yeah, you know, the 12th man can make a statement wherever. <laughs> so, you know, I, I wouldn't look for this to be any different. I got to ask you, Dana, about this, this Twitter deal because, uh, Kevin, I don't know how much you're on Twitter. Oh, I, I, I know Dana <laughs> is. And, um, look, you look terrific, my friend. I, I got to tell you, but the big Earn McCracken thing, what's, what's going on with that? Uh, it was just, it was, it was uh, just some comedy. You got to have fun with this. It's, this profession is pretty hard. It's pretty competitive. You know, everybody's always at each other's throats when it comes to recruiting and, and being competitive on the field. You got to have some fun with it a little bit as well. So uh, that, that was just an ex exchange between me and Coach Spavita. just to have some fun with it. Very entertaining. It was. Uh, recruiting, how's everything going? Kevin, let me ask you first. Good, good. We're, we're all over the place. And, and uh, just like Dana said, you know, you got to mix this time of year with uh, recruiting, home visits, official visits, and practice. And, and so the calendar's kind of changed. So 
uh, one thing's got to give, but uh, and, and what we're, for what we're doing, recruiting's not going to give. We're not going to budge on that. And, and I, I tell you, I, I would imagine that the families, it, it's, it's tough on them because we, here we are in the holidays, and it's probably the busiest time for you guys, right, Dana? Well, it, it, it is, you know, and, and uh, you know, with the whole recruiting thing, I mean, Kevin's done a great job of recruiting, learned a lot of the things that we did. That, that doesn't slow down. That never slows down, but when they let the head coaches out, we got to get out there, we got to, you know, uh, you know, got to get into as many homes as we possibly can and sell our brand. Uh, Big 12 has been great for West Virginia. You know, it's allowed us to recruit uh, at, at a higher level, uh, you know, which is up and down the East Coast. Probably not going to venture too far from that. Uh, as far as the kids go and their families, you know, I mean, that it's, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you don't want to stay at home. You know, so if you have an opportunity to travel and go to a bowl game, I think everybody's going to be excited about it. First year for the playoff. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on that. Um, I, I know the Big 12 w was shut out, and I know there's a lot of controversy as far as that's concerned. But and overall, you have obviously your AD with, with Oliver Luck is on that that committee. Uh, your thoughts on on how the committee did in this first year? Well, I, th I think they did a fantastic job, really. You know, I mean, it, it's the first year of doing it. If you think they're going to get through it without any hiccups, you're you're, you're kind of fooling yourself. Right. So. Uh, you know, Big 12 is probably going to have to tweak some things uh, just to put, put, a, put Big 12 on an even playing field with everybody else. Uh, there's five great conferences out there, and there's, there's only four spots. You know, so, it, so you know, you got to settle it on the field. Um, you know, I think TCU and Baylor both agree that they should, probably should have won that extra game. So uh, it's going to continue to tweak, and I think we're on the right track. Continue to tweak. Uh, I know Bob Bowlesby mm -hmm. has been very vocal, although he has not said or committed to adding teams in the future. Uh, do you think that's the way to go if a waiver is not presented to have a championship game? Well, the, the first step's the waiver. You know, we submitted right. the waiver quite some time ago, and I think every, all, the, all the Big 12 coaches would agree uh, a, a championship game to put us at a 13th game is going to be something that we need to entertain. If the NCAA doesn't allow that, then we probably got to take some steps. But uh, that's way above my pay grade. I'm just trying <laughs> to be a football coach here. You know, that's why they – that's why they get in those meetings and, and, and hash things out. And again, I, I think we're on the right track with it. I just think it's going to take some time to get it right. Kevin, your reaction to year one for the committee? Yeah, I thought they did a great job. I thought, uh, you know, it created the excitement that uh, everybody was looking for. You know, the television ratings, everything was uh, every week. Everybody was waiting on Tuesday, whether they want to admit it or not, to see where right. they were. Uh, I think there's been some discussion about how the, the rankings every week uh, didn't really matter. I think they did. I they, think they I, certainly did. I, you know, I think it, you know football used to be for a lot of fans regionally watched, and I think what it created was a, a situation where people were watching uh, in the South were watching Ohio State and Oregon because it affected people in the South and and all over the country. We were watching different games that that, that maybe didn't watch before just to see who was going to be in that that fourteen playoff. One team from the SEC gets in in Alabama, and who knows what would have happened if, if Missouri upset Alabama in the SEC championship game. With that said, and we, we know the competitiveness in the Big 12 and all the Power Five conferences, that SEC West, that's got to drive you crazy preparing every week for one of those teams. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a grind. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good teams, a lot of uh, good coaches, a lot of good players. But uh, like I said before, I, I think what the playoff did, uh, what this whole setup did, was take people from really being what watching regional football right. as much, but watching national football, and because it affected you and it affected your conference, it affected who's going to be in this playoff situation. And I think from that standpoint, I think it, it's accomplishing what we want to accomplish. Dana, will there be time to go to Graceland while you're down here? Well, I, I, sure there will. The thing that I'm really excited about is getting to know Memphis a little bit, right? But I, I know our practice situation is about two minutes away. We were in New York a couple of years ago, which made that a little bit tough. Right. I was in Miami the year before that, which was a little bit tough, too. So, uh, you know, this is going to be a great bowl. Uh, our kids are excited about coming up and practicing and putting their best foot forward, but also being able to get away and be able to see some of the sights of Memphis as well. With that said, as, as Coach Holgerson said, is, is it tough or is it easy – to balance having a good time, but the mission on at hand is to win the game. Well, I think it's it's part of the bowl experience. You know, you, you've got uh, a chance for to take our team for example. A lot of guys have never been to Memphis, and and so uh, the ability to explore Memphis, to see new things, get some good barbecue, uh, <laughs> and let them see what's happening here. It's it's all part of the experience, and and then you know get ready to play the game too. All right, final question. 
Dana, what will it take for West Virginia to hold that trophy above their heads when it's all said and done? Well, we've had a little bit of a problem this year with turnovers. Yeah, so, I, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you hang on to the ball. So, you know, a lot of that has to do with your quarterback play. We're going to have to do a good job of taking care of the ball, uh, you know, and trying to get points when we can. Uh, it's going to be a competitive game. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be up-tempo, up-paced, uh, you know, and at the end of the day, it's about uh, taking care of the ball and getting some points when you get, have a chance to get some points. As you guys said, you've never met. Both teams have been in this bowl game once, but only Texas A&M played in Memphis. West Virginia played actually in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the one year they had it. So, Kevin, to add that trophy to the uh, nice trophy case at Texas A&M, what will it take to beat West Virginia? I think the same thing. We've had our problems with turnovers, too, you know, as a young team. And being able to handle the, the situation will be a, a big deal for our young players. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I'd say this, I think uh, both teams better get some sleep tonight before because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of plays in this game. There's no question. We expect fireworks. I know it's going to be a great crowd for this game. We're looking forward to it. West Virginia, Texas A&M in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl game. Dana, thank you so much. Thank great you. to see you. Kevin, always good to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. We'll take a short time out. Overtime is next. So 2014 is just about over. In fact, this is our final show of the year. Next week, we'll usher in 2015 by looking at some New Year's resolutions. Today, however, I thought it would be neat to take a quick look back at the year in sports. So here we go. In 2014, the name Richard Sherman became a household name as he led the Seattle Seahawks to a 43-8 route of Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 48. The Memphis Tigers men's hoop squad would go 23-8, but just 12-6 in the American Conference. The Tigers would draw the fifth seed for the conference tournament played at FedEx Forum, and Memphis would get clobbered in the quarterfinals by eventual national champions, Connecticut. The Tigers would get an at-large berth in the NCAA tournament, in which they would beat George Washington in round two, but fall to Virginia in the round of 32. The Memphis Grizzlies would overcome obstacles both on and off the court to win 50 games and draw the seventh seed for the playoffs in the Wild Western Conference. The Grizz suffered key injuries and a complete overhaul in the front office with the firing of President Jason Levian. The Grizz would battle the favored Oklahoma City Thunder to a seventh game in round one of the postseason, but a suspension to Zach Randolph for game seven would prove to be too much for the team to overcome. As for the rest of the playoffs, the Ageless Wonders from San Antonio would win another title as the Spurs avenged a loss from a season ago to the Miami Heat, winning four games to one for their fifth NBA crown. At the FedEx St. Jude Classic, Ben Crane resurrected his career with his fifth victory and the first wire-to-wire -wire win in Memphis since Brian Gay turned the trick in 2009. He would uh, hold off Troy Merritt by a stroke despite a final round 73. On the diamond, the Memphis Redbirds won 79 games and the PCL American Southern Division title, but lost in the first round of the playoffs, falling to Omaha three games to one. Off the field, huge news for the Birds, who were purchased by the St. Louis Cardinals from the city of Memphis. The Cards have started renovations to AutoZone Park, where as part of the deal, we'll spend $4.5 million on upgrades. In the bigs, the Cardinals once again found their way into the postseason before falling to eventual World Series champion San Francisco. The Cards surprised the Dodgers before losing to the G-Men. San Francisco would hold off surprising Kansas City four games to three to win their third title since 2010. Off the field, tragedy struck the Cardinals organization when a car driven by young star Oscar Taveras crashed in his native country of the Dominican Republic, killing both Taveras and his girlfriend. It was discovered later that Taveras' blood alcohol level was five times the legal limit. And finally, 2014 produced a pretty memorable football season for area teams. The play of Ole Miss and Mississippi State drew the eyes of the college pigskin world to the Magnolia State. ESPN Game Day even made an appearance in Oxford for the very first time with singer Katy Perry stealing the show. Tennessee qualified for its first ball under Butch Jones, and Arkansas showed vast improvement and a promising future with Brett Bielema at the helm. And, of course, the Memphis Tigers bounced back from a three-win season in 2013 to win nine games in the regular season, ten in all, and qualify for the program's first bowl game since 2008. Head coach Justin Fuente was named American Coach of the Year and was awarded with a new five-year contract starting at a reported $1.4 per season. 
And that'll do it for now. Next week, we'll talk plenty of Grizzlies. We'll close out the 2014 calendar year with a home game against Houston tonight, a visit to Miami tomorrow, and a visit from the defending champion Spurs on Tuesday. Also, our next telecast of Tigers basketball here on WKNO will come your way at 10.30 p.m. on New Year's Eve. That's next Wednesday as the Tigers open up conference play against Houston. Not a bad way to usher in the new year. Until then, have a great week. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.